Hey, hello friends. Thank you for joining me today. Let me turn this toward myself for just a minute so you can see who it is that's talking to you. <laughs> Hi, my name's Dan and uh, I'm sitting in my studio for a little while this afternoon. Um, and uh, let me make sure that we've got good sound going here. I'm not using a microphone. We should be okay. And um, I was just minding my own business doing a little tiny little commission watercolor piece and then it dawned on me this would really be a good moment for discussion with you guys the discussion is watercolor what i call watercolor sketch put that word sketch in quotation marks perhaps watercolor sketch versus legit watercolor technique now uh, i i don't i'm not inviting you to comment on my use of the word legit call it whatever you want Call it whatever you want. There is American Watercolor Society, International Watercolor Society. There are strong, strong guidelines, if not hard and fast rules, about what you can and cannot do in a watercolor to get into their uh, shows. And I think mostly it has to do with no opaque medium, right? Now, Having said that, and again, this is why I don't want to get into it. I'm just going to close a few doors. Having said that, my favorite watercolorist in the in the world is Elvaro Castanet, or Castanet, whatever it is, um, from Uruguay, South America. My favorite in the world, and he uses opaque white at the end of his painting. So there you go. And and I don't know how many people could look at his stuff and say, "You're no good. You use white paint," because <laughs> he's maybe the best in the world. Anyway in my humble opinion. But uh, here's what I'm working on right now. So that's, that's enough of you guys looking at my face. We don't need any more of that nonsense. This is a little commission that I've been working on for several weeks. I started uh, back on our, our five guys, me and Mike Rooney and four, three other guys on our trip to Ocracoke several weeks ago. Okay. So this is, again, in quotation marks, this is legit watercolor. No color pencils with no pen and ink and no opaque gouache or opaque anything, okay? I'm not quite finished, but I'm getting close to finished. My question is this, and this has probably taken me three hours, three and a half hours maybe, something like that so far. Now, while we were together on the island in Ocracoke, I did this, and forgive me, this is just, as you can see, a lousy print off my printer. If I had laminated it, it would look a lot better. The colors would be a lot punchier, or if I had printed it on photo paper, it would be a lot more intense, but I think it's good enough for you to get the point and see, see what it looks like. This is a watercolor sketch. Which for me, now this is just me, that means I start out with watercolor pencil, breaking the rule number one, and then I finish up with ink. Most typically, let me grab a typical, uh, what do I mean by ink? You can use any kind of pen, calligraphy pen, dip pen, technical pen, or photograph pen, or anything. But these days, actually, I'm, you know, I've caved in to the, the dark side. <laughs> And I'm just using a, a plain, old, high-quality uh, Sharpie marker, if you will. If I can use that, if I can call that. High-quality Sharpie marker. This is made by Faber-Castell. And, and uh, I've already talked about how I bought a whole bunch of them and tested all of them for to make sure they were water-fast. And that is one brand that is. So the difference is this took me about an hour maybe an hour and a half at the outside. This is taking me three hours and I'm not done yet. I will never get into any watercolor society competition with this. I can't get in with this. And I guess what I'm, the reason I bring this up is I'm in a bit of an identity crisis. Let me give, show you a couple other examples. This, also a print, in fact, I did this last year. I did a side-by-side, -side, this exact same question, legit watercolor technique versus cheating watercolor. And this is my cheat. This is starting with watercolor pencils and finishing with white opaque. 
and oh there's no pen and ink on this one so no pen and ink here just white opaque white and this is a pretty nice drawing it's about the original is just a little bit bigger than this versus here's again here's a again quotation marks legit style watercolor painting this is me playing Dave, David Stickle. <laughs> of course, I'm not as good as David Stickle. That's what he does all the time. But this is me, you know, having a go at tight. This probably took me four and a half or five hours. Long time for a little drawing. This took me an hour and a half. This one took me an hour and a half, maybe two hours at the outside. So the watercolor sketch is a lot faster. I have this little nagging inner doubt. Does it really look as good as a legit watercolor? And at that, I'm sort of, and part of the reason this matters to me is when I go off and when, if a, if a bride orders a watercolor painting of her reception or so forth, you know, do I feel obligated to do legit technique or can I do cheater? And again, uh, if you're catching the pattern, the, the cheater method, which I call watercolor sketch, in, in general takes me less than half the time of legit. I mean, I think this looks absolutely cool. This is a building in uh, Spokane, Washington, where our, our kids and grandkids lived for seven years. One of the most famous and, you know, spectacular buildings in, in old historic Spokane. A lot of fun. And by the way, yes, this is just, and both of these, uh, but no, the, the, I'm sorry, not both of these. This one, I, I left all the background out on purpose. That was for fun. That was decision from the very beginning that there wouldn't be any foliage or background or sky, or just the building. And after I I realized I really shouldn't have put that bush in there either. But okay, so that's the only thing is bush plants that are actually connected to the building. I planted those. I painted those. But even, even the grass down here is completely white paper. Um, anyway, that's a, that's a question. We don't have to resolve it tonight. But I thought I will, I will let you come in and look over my shoulder for a few minutes while I finish this painting. I'm I'm 99% finished, I think. I'm all the way down to using uh, an X-Acto knife. Now, here's a good question. I don't know if David Stickle, one of my super realistic watercolor heroes and personal friend. David, do you use a, do you ever scratch? I have a hunch that he doesn't, or if he does, he only does it like in emergencies or when he's making corrections. But um, scratching in watercolor is a is an old, uh, well-known, traditional technique. It's not it's nothing new. Uh, people have been scratching watercolors forever. Uh, works best if you're working on a 300 pound, and I don't know what this is. No, 140 pound. Works best if you're working on, but this is a block, so it'll stand up pretty well. And I am just about at the point where, <laughs> where most people get to when they're trying, when they're doing super realism. At some point, they say, "What I'm saying right now is, oh, what the heck? Good grief! That's close enough. That is close enough. I don't need to get any more realistic than that." And that attitude, that bad attitude. <laughs> is what gives people like David Stickle uh, income security because he does every last stinking pebble blade of grass. He actually doesn't paint that many pebbles and blades of grass. He paints more buildings, but he doesn't wimp out uh, when, he, when he gets close to the finish line as I am clearly wimping out here because, uh, and I am not entering a competition with this. It was just a little exercise, and I did these. I, I did started these two paintings on the same evening. This one, and this one, and and it was sort of an intentional again another intentional side by side exercise for myself. Which do I like better? I will tell you my 
here's what my hunch tells me. Here's what, what I think I'm discovering. Is that this is actually my, Dan Nelson's, my native language, my native technique. Cheating, quote-unquote, though it is, this is what flows out of me and what I know well. So frankly, most of the weddings I do, I do this technique. Um, and I think rather than trying to force myself to switch over and and labor, 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 work, 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 this was fun. But rather than trying to force myself to, in a sense, can the leopard change his spots? Instead of forcing myself to do this, I think I'd probably be better off developing this a little further. And I hear, I think of my old friend, Neil, and I'm forgetting his name, Neil Watson, Dr. Neil Watson, who's passed away now. He lives in here in Raleigh for a number of years. You can look him up. Did some fabulous water, and he used pen and ink in conjunction, real, real pen and ink in conjunction with his watercolor, and he did really nice stuff. And I, my guess is, instead of, in a sense, playing around, if you will, <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just playing around. I'm, th this, I'm selling this drawing for not nearly what it's worth, <laughs> given how much time I've spent on it. But I'm selling it to a friend for a hundred bucks. Because I told him I would. And uh, that's all right. Um, I think probably, uh, maybe this is the, the end of a little journey for me. The end of a little season of experimentation. And I should just resign myself, if you will, to, no, this is me. This is me. And I should... Um, Instead of, I should develop this. I should look at artists like Neil Watson, who were, did it like a boss, who were killer at this kind of stuff, and try to develop this rather than uh, feeling, always feeling mildly guilty. <laughs> always, <laughs> there's the truth is coming out. Always feeling mildly guilty, like if you're a real man, you do it, you know, uh, Watercolor Society of America technique. Um, and forget that. And just do what um, people like to see. And, and of course, I know good and well that it's only watercolors who know the rules of the American Watercolor Society. You know, um, almost. I mean, hardly anybody else in the whole world even knows that there's such a rule as, you know, no opaque medium in an AWS competition, American Watercolor Society. When people walk into a gallery, the number, the percentage of people who would know that rule and be bothered by my cheating is so minuscule, it's not even wor worth worrying about them. So I think maybe I just, right there in front of you folks, I just answered my own question. This was fun, and it is fun. To me, doing watercolor is a little bit like taking a vacation because it's a, it's a break for me from what I normally do. Now, just a little bit of explanation. When I was in a working illustrator for many, many, many years, 25 years, 30 years, depending how you count it. Um, I did a lot of watercolor, so it's not its not like I'm a beginner or, or a novice at watercolor. It's just over the last 15 years, my oil painting technique has been my bread and butter. So, of course, my, my oil painting technique has developed at a rapid pace, and my watercolor technique has sort of lagged in the background because I'm focused on my bread and butter, as you can imagine. So with this knife, I'm just doing a little bit of highlights. You see, that's that's legal. Adding, coming in here with a tiny fine point uh, brush and doing white gouache, that's not legal quote-unquote, legal, I'm assuming. I'm trusting that you know what I mean by that. Legal as far as American Watercolor Society. All right, so there's my experiment. And thanks for helping me work through this. <laughs> I think I'm going to start doing watercolor sketches. And... Not worry about my uh, 
insecurities. In fact, instead, instead of trying to do more of this kind of thing, instead I should perfect um, this kind of thing. Really push this, really develop this. All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, leave your chat, uh, leave your uh, comments, and I'll look forward to reading them later. Thanks so much. End of debate. <laughs> bye bye.